The rugby championship for the All Blacks hasn't exactly started in the way they would have liked. One win from four games, two losses to the Springboks, one to the Pumas, and now they have a Bledisloe Cup that they do have to defend. And in this video, I'm going to be giving my All Blacks XV that I think would be a very strong side going up against the Australians. Now, I should mention this is not what I think they will go with in the first or the second match. I feel like we'll see a nice little mix of the experience with the inexperience. But overall, from the rugby championship so far, I've gone with a side that I feel would be the best that the ABs can go with. But starting in the front row, I have got Tamaiti Williams as the number one, Cody Taylor number two, and number three, Tyrell Lomax. So no changes there compared to what we've seen for the majority of the rugby championship. Tamaiti Williams not quite having those standout games up against the South Africans, but he's still a strong enough player that if you give him a little bit more time, I think he can get a lot better. Ethan DeGroote, the neck injury was the concern for him. I don't know how long he's going to be out for, but I do think Tamaiti Williams is a very decent shout for that number one jersey. Number two, Cody Taylor. I think that he proved in that second game up against the Springboks that he is definitely the right choice for number two. He had 70 running meters. He was beating defenders. His lineouts were accurate. Even in a game where both sides were heavily contesting. And then alongside that, we did see the tackling from Cody Taylor also impressing throughout the 80 minutes. Now, there was a patch where he went off the field due to an HIA, where a sapphire more got the short opportunity. But after that, Taylor made his way back on and continued to make those meters. Number three, Tyrell Lomax. He's been a busy man throughout the South African matches, making 14 tackles in the first contest. I believe he made about 12 in the second game now he did get a yellow card right at the end of the second test match but even with that his ball running at the moment is what's thoroughly impressing me and yes for a prop that's not normally something you would say but he's looking like a really good option for that tight head prop role and i do think up against australia we'll actually see new zealand have a little bit of rotation we'll see pasilio tossi possibly get the chance alongside fletcher null but in terms of the strongest that they can go with right at this moment, I believe Tyrell Lomax is in that front row. Moving on to the locking duo. Now, I'll be honest, the only reason I've got this man at four is because he's the captain. And that is Scott Barrett. Second game up against the South Africans. There's just something not quite working for Scott Barrett at the moment. I think that it's just that he's out of form. And hopefully we will eventually see Scott Barrett find that rhythm but he's giving away penalties he's dropping the ball it's just as if maybe there's a bit too much going on in terms of that captaincy as well as trying to play that doesn't really suit scott barrett at the moment but like i said that doesn't mean that that's the way that it will continue the all blacks line out is still being pretty efficient even with scott barrett back in and partnering with scott barrett i would have top of i think that that man's rugby championship is one that is thoroughly impressive. The fact that he's gone from a guy that some people felt, yes, he can come off the bench occasionally, but some even felt he wasn't strong enough to do that role. But throughout this rugby championship, getting turnovers, winning lineouts, getting lineouts, steals as well. I mentioned how important that is for a lock, not just getting your own ball, but getting your oppositions as well. And Tupavai, he cemented himself as one of the locks for myself. Even with the return of Patrick Tuipilotu, I would argue that Vai should keep his spot and that Barrett would be the one you get rid of for Tui Pilotu. But looking through at the loose forward trio. Now, there were quite a few negatives in that second game up against the Springboks. But one positive that New Zealand found was Wallace Satiti playing at number six. So I think he will be the strongest option moving forward just for now. Black Hitter is injured. Once again, not too sure how long he will be out for. But off the performance we saw from Wallace Satiti, I think I would go with Satiti as six and then shift Ethan Blackadder maybe to number seven or have him as an impact player making his way off the bench. He's had a solid competition, Ethan Blackadder, but the impact that Satiti brought to this game was just a little bit more dangerous, in my opinion, than we've seen from Ethan Blackadder. So I would have Satiti as the six, and that is ahead, of course, of Summer Penny Finau, Luke Jacobson, and all those other Lose forwards, number seven, I had to throw in a wild card. I'm not talking about the rugby YouTuber. Number seven, I believe at the moment, it's a bit of a problem. 
for New Zealand. And I've been trying to work it out for the last maybe four or five weeks. What is going wrong in the New Zealand loose forward trio that other sides are finding success with? And I honestly think it is the lack of running that we see from the New Zealand loose forward trio specifically in that number seven jersey. When it was Ethan Black at it, it's not really known for having a huge amount of carries or a huge amount of meters made when he does carry the ball. When it was Dalton Papali, same boat, more of a tackling type of player with the occasional turnover. Sam Kane, you don't really see that man running the ball. So then it brings the question, are you better off putting Savia back to number seven and having a ball running eight? Or could you add someone else into the squad due to an injury, such as the one to Ethan Blackadder? Number seven, controversially, I've gone with Peter Lakai. Now, some people may not even know who that is, and that's understandable. The bloke hasn't had an international game. But throughout the season for the Hurricanes, he thoroughly impressed me. And I feel like he was one of those guys that were right on the verge of being an All Blacks bolter, but probably one of the big reasons he wasn't selected was because of the amount of players that they could go with. Ethan Blackadder, a guy who had hardly any minutes throughout Super Rugby, but is a Scott Robertson guy, and he did back him, and he's done well so far. Sam Kane, coming back in after playing in Japan. He's had some good games, but at the same time, like I said, we're not seeing that ball running coming from the All Blacks, which is normally what makes... The AB is so dangerous. The fact that they can have an attack coming from any player, whether it's a prop or whether it's a lock or whether it's a winger, they can make the meters. And that is something that I believe Peter Lakai would be able to do for the All Blacks if he was given the opportunity. Not only that, he also has great work in the breakdown, can get the turnovers. Because at the moment, you need a player who can defend as well as attack and be dangerous with both of them. I think that's Peter Luckai. So do let me know what do you think of a Peter Luckai call up for the All Blacks. Is it something you'd like to see? Or am I just putting random players in for the sake of it? Do let me know. But number eight, this is where I have got Ardi Savia. It doesn't seem like they're willing to put him back to seven. So I thought I might as well have him as that number eight. He's a fantastic player. Although in the last few games, hasn't really stepped up to the level that we would expect of Adi Savia and he holds himself at such a high standard that these last two games up against the box he'll be disappointed by but I think he's still the strongest eight option with the way that they've got it set up now the other option you could look at is Ethan Black at a number six Adi Savia number seven Wallace Satiti number eight but I don't know whether they're willing to make that switch so for that reason I've kept Adi Savia as the number eight but moving on to the back line I thought that the combination of Cortez Ratama and Damian McKenzie worked relatively well up against the Springboks. That being said, there were no tries scored for the All Blacks throughout that game, but I don't think the sole blame can go to Ratama as well as McKenzie. So I keep that combination here. For the All Blacks, TJ Piranara, the man's not helping himself because he keeps on complaining to the referees and he keeps on getting warnings and penalties against him for complaining. That's the last thing you want. And I feel like that's something that Scott Barrett hasn't really got control of yet. Just needs some duct tape. Just needs to be able to settle TJ down. But having TJ off the bench, I also don't think really worked for the All Blacks because when he made his way on, the pace of the ruck slowed and it became more methodical, which at that moment in the game, New Zealand needed it to speed up. So I've gone with Ratama in the starting side, but I think we're now starting to get towards that stage where we may see one of the other young halfbacks get more opportunities in the centres. This is where I've gone with Jordy Barrett as the number 12 and number 13, Billy Proctor. Now, I mentioned how I went with what I feel is the strongest that they could have gone with for this rugby championship. Rico Ioane's name is nowhere to be seen. He had a good game up against the Springboks in match number one. Match number two... I feel like that man would have been better off handing in his resume trying to get the part as Damian McKenzie's shadow because that's all he was throughout the fixture. He was always where McKenzie was either trying to run or any time McKenzie wanted to pass, Rico was right there, pretty much breathing down his neck. So I do think that Rico is still out of form. So that's why I go with Billy Proctor. 
Number 13, Hurricanes combination. Seems to make sense for everyone apart from the selectors. Now, normally the reason you keep Rico in is because of that defense, but even that has been struggling in recent times as well. So I would make the switch. I feel like up against the Aussies, it's the perfect time to do so. Definitely because they just conceded 67 points up against the Argentines. That was a bit of a blowout. But Billy Proctor, he's got try scoring ability. I wonder whether he's still got his form from Super Rugby Pacific, just because we haven't seen that man out there on the field in so long. The last game we saw him was for the Fijians, and I know he had a bit of an injury after that, but I'd like to think he's back now and rearing a go for some minutes. Moving on to the back three. Number 11, if he is match fit, I would have Caleb Clark. I think we learned from that second test how much of a gap New Zealand have in their wings when they don't have someone like a Caleb Clark. Mark Talia, Pretty average game. Sever Reese. Unfortunately, that's now two awful performances in a row. So I would go with Caleb Clark out on the left wing. Number 14. This is where I have put Will Jordan. He's had two games at 15 for the All Blacks. Neither of them has been able to set the world on fire. So while he's able to score tries out on the right wing, that is exactly where I would play him. And I know people won't agree with that. And maybe Will Jordan just needs a game that isn't up against South Africa to be able to cement himself as that starting 15. But for now, I just feel like if he can give you one try out on the wing, if he touches the ball a few times, it's unfortunate because you want to have him touch the ball a lot more. But I'd rather have his one try than have him at fullback and only get to do the bare minimum throughout the contest. Number 15, this is where I have gone. Bowden Barrett, once again, didn't bring that same impact in the last game off the bench as he did in the games up against the English, but he's still a very strong option to have in this All Blacks squad. We won't be too far away from Steven Petafeta coming back. You've also got Ruben Love, who I would really enjoy seeing play up against the Australians. But Bowden at 15 at the moment seems to be the best choice that the All Blacks do have. But nonetheless, that is my All Blacks XV and what I feel would be the strongest to go up against the Wallabies. Now, like I said, this is not what I'm predicting for match one or two. We will have our videos coming out closer to the time when we have updates on the injury. Just for context, this video being filmed five hours after the game between the All Blacks and the Springboks. Just the first initial reactions in terms of what could be changed to make it a bit stronger for the ABs. But do let me know who you would have in your strongest All Blacks XV. Now that I've put Peter Lakai in, if you guys have players outside of this All Black squad that you do want to see in, be sure to mention them as well. Thank you all very much for tuning in. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all for the next one.